But Microsoft just finished its fall 2019 Surface event where it announced a new laptop or Surface Laptop 3, Surface Pro 7. But then the company also took a couple shots at Apple and the iPad Pro with two new products. One we'll see just in a few weeks, another a year from now. And that's exactly what we're going to talk to today, uh, talk to talk about today and get into whether or not the iPad Pro can replace your laptop and if we trust Microsoft to do that with the new Surface Pro X. Jason, what do you think about the new Surface Pro X and Microsoft's approach to a two-in-one iPad Pro killer, if you will? Well, Jason, you know, we have been observing over the last several years the evolution of Windows as a platform, right? What, what, what really, it's been kind of existential for Microsoft as to what are they going to do, you know, when people stop buying big, expensive laptops and desktop computers, you know, what are, what are they going to do to Windows to modernize it after, you know, it came out in 1985, right? So there's every iteration of Windows has been more and more legacy architecture and corrupt as they move this bus along, right? So you have Win32, which has been around for over, over 20 years as the predominant developer systems architecture. With Windows 10, they introduced what we now call universal Windows platform or modern architecture, which is a completely new way of, of of, of a programmatic model to build applications, which is supposed to replace all that old stuff. Now we've been wondering, when are they gonna move exclusively to all this new stuff and let and throw the baby out with the bathwater? Or, you know, this is what we saw today should represent that, right? It should be the future of Microsoft. This is their super cloud enabled, super modernized systems architecture for Windows as part of what we're seeing as Surface Pro X. Not 10, not 10. It's not 10. Pro, it's, this is an Apple. Windows 10 on a Surface Pro X. So we don't have to say 10, 10, 10 on an X. Is right, what yeah, we're let's about. get it right. Yeah, and, and so the new Surface Pro X is ARM powered, right? So it uses a custom processor that it sounds like they worked very closely with Qualcomm with. It's the Microsoft SQ1 chipset. They threw in some graphic power. It's supposed to be the most powerful ARM processor per watt ever made. I think it runs at seven watts, which most ARM press processors uh, that they said today in the event run about two watts. And they specifically called out that it, this new Surface Pro X is more powerful than the Surface Pro 6 was running Intel, which is a very big shot at Intel, uh, if we're being honest here. But the big question remains, what version of Windows 10 does the Surface Pro X run? What do you think? Well, you know, I've been, I've been reading up on this for a while, and I've been, I've been watching the evolution of Windows as a system, all the underpinning architecture changes that have been happening over time. Microsoft is actually, you know, in the cloud, they've made a lot of changes by implementing containerization technology, ways to increase density, ways to optimize performance, with, with new style arc, uh, applications running on their architecture. So now that they are miniaturizing it onto the laptop or, or the tablet, as opposed to the cloud, uh, we believe that this is a highly containerized uh, operating system that runs on mobile devices, uh, instead of using virtual machine technology and other things which are much more power intensive. And you have to be careful about power use, especially when you're talking about ARM, right? So. We don't really know what the name of this thing is. It could be Windows Core OS, and they may, it may, they may end up branding it as something else. But essentially, this is a version of Windows that runs on the ARM architecture. It does appear to have some sort of Intel compatibility for legacy systems, because other than using a remote, a remote desktop protocol to talk to Azure, now they, Microsoft did unveil Windows Desktop in the cloud this last week as, as a product you can buy from them. So that's one way of getting that application compatibility is to run those applications elsewhere and display them on the screen. But I do believe that this, this new ARM-based system can run Intel applications emulated in, in some fashion. So I just refreshed Microsoft's press website and they published the spec sheet for the Surface Pro X. Okay. And under technical specifications, operating systems, here's what it lists. Windows 10 Home, Windows 10 Pro. If that's but, true. Yeah, but this is an ARM system. This is not an Intel-based box. 
Right. But have they figured out a way to to make it happen and it not? Well, I mean, those are just, you know, when Microsoft is weird when it comes to stock keeping units, like it could be Windows Home and Windows Pro for ARM architecture for what they, for, for, you know, they could end up having, they, they could have very well compiled every single darn component that exists for Intel onto ARM and now have a separate set of SKUs just for that, you know? So sure. Microsoft has always been SKU crazy with, how, with, with versions of stuff that they have for different markets. Especially which, Windows, yeah. Yeah, it, 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 I mean, Microsoft's message has always been it's Windows. Right. Don't yeah, worry yeah. about yeah. The, don't don't worry about the man behind the curtain. It's just it's Windows. It's the Windows you've always loved. Don't, just just think of it as Windows. And the the systems architect in me wants to dive into the nitty gritty, but your average user just cares about whether it's Windows and runs Windows apps, right? Correct. That's yeah. So I mean, advertising it as Windows 10 Home and Windows 10 Pro is a very consumer. Uh, a, consumer approachable uh, aspect to it. And so I guess to me, the Surface Pro X, let's, let's take them at their word that it runs Windows 10 Home and you're gonna be able to run most of your Windows applications. You know, I think uh, they, they said during the keynote that Chrome will run, which is, you know, a, a pretty big aspect of it. If everything but, doesn't run that you expect to run, it's gonna be a failure. So that has always been the issue with these specialized weird versions of Windows before, when they've done this for Windows NT, they had MIPS, they had Itanium, they had PowerPC, they had all these things. They had all kinds of application compatibility issues that you had to recompile stuff. If this works as advertised, meaning it runs all your existing applications that exist in the, in the extant today, nobody has anything to worry about regardless of what flavor of engine that it runs on, whether it's ARM or, or something else. So that's really where we are today. This is the future of Windows. This is what, we have, what we're gonna have to expect to see in, in years to come, is this, is this new beast, this ARM thing, right? But we're, go, yeah. we're just gonna call it Windows and we're gonna, and we're gonna, and we're gonna be happy with that. That's really yeah. what Microsoft is telling us. You know? So if there's no issues with the version of Windows that runs, it is a true laptop replacement at that point. There's yeah. no compatibility Easy. issues. Um, but how do you think it stacks up to the iP Apple's iPad Pro with now the new iPad OS and desktop class Safari? You know, for me personally, the iPad Pro, the 12.9 inch, the current generation model, um, we're recording this in early October before, you know, any potential late October Apple events. Uh, it is a full laptop replacement for yeah. me. I can do everything I need to get done on an iPad Pro with iPad OS and the upgraded browser. I mean, that was always the thing holding me back. The, the app ecosystem is there. Yes. And now um, with the browser, it kind of completes the picture. But which one is, it, I guess it really depends on what platform you prefer. But both of them, are they valid laptop replacements? I think so. But I think it depends on the use case scenario. So. You know, my uh, Apple has always been about the post PC experience, like creating a new ecosystem, right. creating a new uh, methodology for running applications and such that are that are easier to y use. Uh, you know, th the fact that they've added the new multitasking and all this stuff makes it a, a lot. You can use it as your main workflow device, right? Provided the applications work the way you want them to work, right? That's really yeah. what it means. Now, with Microsoft, it's all about integrating with their existing user base right we've got decades of uh, businesses which have implemented all kinds of custom systems and, and and authentication with microsoft active directory and security and all that you can't just throw that out the window right so microsoft acknowledges that you know yeah we want to give you these new experiences we want to give you these new capabilities we want to, we want you to have the ability to use these new technologies but at the same time we recognize you have all your old garbage you know, sitting in your data centers that you need to work, right? You need, you need to get your work done. So I think that if you're an entrenched Microsoft environment, the Surface Pro X and the ARM version of Windows is a compelling uh, alternative to iPad, especially if you use, if you're a heavy Microsoft Office user and, and such, right? Yeah, and they, yeah, especially the office stuff. I mean, all that's integrated in, you know, it's going to, there's no, going to be no compatibility issues there. And they have built in always on LTE. The pricing of the Surface Pro X starts at $999. I doubt that includes the keyboard as well no. as the pretty cool pin adapter that the slim surface, surface slim pin or whatever they ended up calling it, um, that goes into the keyboard itself. I thought that interaction uh, was pretty 
pretty intuitive and neat to go um, with as well. So we have the Surface Pro X, but Microsoft also gave us a preview of what's to come a year two from now. Two more things, not just one more thing, two, two more things. Two things. One is a full, both of them have foldable or dual screen foldable devices. They can't say they're foldable displays because there's a hinge in the middle and there's two separate screens. They look like so books. They look, they, like books. they look like books, glass covered books. The Surface Duo is, a, is the more of the tablet Surface Pro X, Surface Pro replacement. But it's an Intel machine, not an ARM. But it runs Intel. And what? then, the, wait, the Surface Neo, that's the Surface Neo, I'm sorry. The Surface Duo is a smaller version of that, that is a phone you and mean, runs Android. Which means it's an ARM device. Well, which means it's the an thing. ARM device. You say it runs Android. <laughs> that, it hey, Microsoft make, says it runs I don't understand. Okay, so I, I don't understand completely why they would want to build an Android device when they just built a Windows on ARM and they spent all this money in Qualcomm designing this integrated system so they could just put an Android device out there. Now, I think when we learn more about this thing, we're going to find out it actually, in fact, does run Windows and Android runtime capability exists on it which would make sense because that technology has been proven before. Uh, Microsoft was I, I going to do that agree. with the launch of Windows 10. I fully want the Surface Duo, the phone, to run legit Android. I want, they said they no. it with Google on it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. They, they've integrated Android so tightly with Windows 10 already. Um, owning but that stack, coming, it's replacing Android and Chrome. Why, why, wouldn't, why would they invest all this time to customize this bespoke version of Microsoft Android just to throw it in the garbage in two or three years. Yeah, I, I, I like the appeal of true, a true Android device and not having uh, to do the runtime stuff. Yeah, I, I'm excited about that. And you know, we have a year before this. I might even buy one, but even still, Jason, I think it's very weird that we're, how many, how many Microsoft platforms do we need to support today? Yeah, not today including iOS. Today was very confusing as far as which direction Microsoft is exactly going, right? They had Intel stuff, they had ARM stuff. We didn't even talk about the Surface Neo, which is their Intel wow. foldable tablet that runs Windows 10 X, which is a specialized version of Windows 10, not Windows 10 10, Windows 10 X. It doesn't run on the Surface Pro X. I mean, see, there yeah, was a lot of confusing stuff going on today, a lot that we still have to parse and kind of get through. Um, some of it, like I said, we have until holidays 2020 to get through. But I, for me, I really was found the found the Surface Pro X super appealing. I don't use Windows on a daily basis. Yeah, I use it a you lot know what? I was gonna buy. I, I don't know when that thing is coming, but you know, I'm gonna be buying a new iPad probably next month when it's well, this month when it's announced or next month um, because I don't currently have an iPad Pro right now. But I could very if if this thing does what I need it to do, I might not go back to an iPad. Yeah, so it launches November 5th. It's available for pre-order as of today, October 2nd. Launches November 5th, which is, you know, just over a month away. And yeah, it, look, there's a lot of stuff. I, but iPad Pro can replace my laptop, but I've spent a lot of time figuring out workflows to make that yeah. work in some areas, especially photo editing and some of this very specialized stuff. There's that a lot I of jury to. rigging of, of of your lifestyle to adapt to it versus right. you know, it just working for you, period, right? Exactly. And with the Surface Pro X, if it's running all the Windows apps that I, I know will do what I need to get done at $999 with an yeah. LTE modem, and you could swap the hard drive out yourself. So buy the base model, put your own hard drive in. Come on. I mean, that's a good deal. Yeah, and, you. you know, a powerful device in and of itself. Any really quick final thoughts, Jason? Well, my final thoughts is that, you know, Microsoft is really stepping up its game. Um, you know, I would like them to eliminate some of the confusion in all these different devices and operating systems. I think that their, their next, honestly, their next developer conference is gonna be extremely busy just trying to figure out all this stuff. And as a software developer, what do I target? How do I target it? What do I prioritize my development priorities around? Those are all going to be very big questions for their ecosystem and developer community in the next few years. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. Next year is going to be real interesting to see where Microsoft goes with developers. Uh, I think that's a good place to stop right there. 
Thanks for watching the latest edition of Jason Squared. I'm Jason Cipriani. And I'm Jason Perlow. Catch us on ZDNet.com.